Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome to Landmark's Halftime Show, or our halftime service. So why don't you stand up and give the Lord some praise all over this building. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified, be glorified, be glorified, be glorified in the heavens, be glorified in the earth, be glorified in this temple. Jesus, Jesus, be thou glorified, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, be thou glorified. Sing it again, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, be thou glorified. Come on, just praise him. We love you, Jesus. Be glorified in the heavens, Lord. Be glorified in the earth, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We just want to give you praise, Lord. Thanks, Lord. We praise you tonight, Lord. We praise you tonight, Lord. Lord of all creation, of water, earth, and sky, the heavens are your task. Just bring him a monetary gift tonight. Let's love him now with an offering. 
we will come into his presence with thanksgiving in our heart. We will come into his courts with praise and bring our king a gift. Come on, when you get it, let's just bless it. Hold it up to the Lord and let's bless it back to him. Wonderful Jesus, we want to say thank you for what you've given to us. And now, Lord, thank we you, give Jesus. a portion back to you. you. Whether this be a first fruit or a tithe or an offering, whatever it is, we offer it to you from earth to glory. Amen. May we make a money exchange now from this old darkened world to your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. All right, let's bring it to the Lord. Amen. Here we are, praising the Lord with our giving. Coming with joy and gladness and singing. Here we are. Joy that comes from giving to the Lord. Come on, sing this chorus with us. Here we are, praising the Lord with our giving. Coming with joy and gladness and singing. Here we are, praising the Lord and receiving. Joy that comes. right now. Linda, I want you to come forward and we are going to pray over your feet. Come right here, front and center. I want as many of you that want to come around her. Let's gather around and uh, will you join us at home in praying for Linda? She is a faithful woman of God and I'll tell you her feet. There's something going on with her feet, but we're just going to believe God for a mighty miracle. Will you believe with me? All right, Brother Arp, could you kneel down there and put your hands on top of her foot. Come on, ladies. You all gather around in the name of Jesus. Oh, that's right. We've got a social distance here a little bit. But, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we speak healing over those feet now in the name of Jesus right there, Lord. If it be that bunion or whatever it is, the edema, swelling, we command you to go out. May she not be the same. From right now, about 6.38 on Wednesday night, forever. May she not be the same from this night into forever because of your blood. Because of your stripes, she is healed. In Jesus' name. How many believe that with me? Amen. Amen. Well, Linda, you go believing. Oh, man, I got the, a great praise report today. I had never heard our Brother Randy like this. He's our head usher, and we all love Brother Randy here, but his son's name is Nick, and we've met him here at Landmark before, but uh, Nick had been having seizures uh, for a couple of year period, I think. Anyway, uh, they found that he had a benign brain tumor, and so today they took it out. They were gonna go in about noon. They finally got in about two o'clock, and the surgery was supposed to be three hours, which still wasn't bad. It went for five hours, so they were getting a little nervous. But the doctor just feels like that it was just a total success. And uh, I guess Nick had a seizure on Saturday, a couple of them. And the, pastor, uh, the, the doctor, when he got there, he said, Nick, you've had your last one. And so he was very, very thankful. Randy, I'm telling you, that man was crying. He was leaping. He said, Pastor, I just wanted to run out in the street and scream, God is good, because God was so good to his son and brought him through. And so they're probably um, moving into uh, recovery right now. He is in recovery, but they weren't going to be able to see him for a little more time than usual, which makes sense when you've had that serious of a surgery. But they got the tumor out, and doctors just says, I, I, you know what? The doctor said, I had a good day. 
And Randy said, you should have had a good day because you were being prayed for all over. Clear out to California, you were being prayed for. So we will pray for uh, Nick uh, and for Randy and his family that's there in Virginia right now. Also, uh, Gene Duke is doing much better. Uh, he had some things go on Sunday, but he's doing very well. Just had a polyp, and so they got rid of that. And um, also, his uh, shingles are doing much better, so we give God praise for that. David's mother, Joyce, is doing much better. She was at Kauia Delta, pretty sick, but she came home today. So she's doing better. So we have a lot of good reports tonight. Um, but Maria, her father, I think I told you, was very low on Sunday, but he did pass. And uh, that is Eliberto, I hope I'm saying this right, Bustamonte. And uh, I saw them today, and the family's just rejoicing that our precious brother, he was so tired, and he fought a good fight, and he kept the course. And uh, he just ran it all the way out until the end, faithful to the Lord. So he's crossed over, and uh, we took them some food. So if you think about it, pray for Maria and her precious mama and the siblings. Um, would you stand with me inside the church right now? And, and let's just take these to the Lord. Let's start by praying uh, for uh, Brother Randy's son. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for being with Randy and and his family, and I was just rejoicing to hear all oh, the thrill in his voice, Father. He was so very thankful to you, and, and his love for you came out, and, and the trust that he had for you. Thank you, Father, for giving Randy and the mother and, and Stacy and, and the family the peace that passes understanding and the siblings, and thank you for the touching the doctor's hands. Lord, we give you praise for a good night. Nick, we command you just to sleep well tonight, be restful, and may you have total success in Jesus' name. Be back to normal very soon. Father, touch Maria and her family. Little mama, Lord, give them strength and peace that passes understanding. When a loved one crosses over, we sure need your peace to keep us. Lord, give them strength as they rejoice in what's happened to daddy, but they'll miss him. So, Lord, may your glory be upon them. I want to thank you for touching Sister Joyce tonight, the precious woman of God, that your glory has kept her, and you will set her totally free and bring her total wholeness in the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Again, we got a lot of good praise reports tonight. Thank you for touching Gene and bringing him, uh, Lord, through that severe shingles. And, Lord, we just bless him tonight. May he be back real soon. And if there be any at home tonight, Lord, that's having any issues go on, we bless you tonight in Jesus' name. May you be healed and whole and blessed, blessed of the Lord who loves you the most. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen? Well, praise the Lord. You may be seated in his wonderful presence. Thank you all for being here tonight. So glad you're with us. And I want you all who's in the house to let me know what you think about coming out on Wednesday nights. Uh, so I know that we're enjoying it. and We've got a lot of people, some of you at home, still haven't returned. And I don't know why you're not back with us yet. We're just as safe as any place can be. So we invite you, come on back to church with us. And, uh, and I promise you, you're going to be blessed of the Lord. We're just having a great time, aren't we, church? And we are enjoying ourselves getting to come together. But can I encourage you to do one thing for me, please? You know, you hear there's another uptick of the coronavirus in our towns. And it, and it has hit kind of close to home now in some places. So uh, I'm going to ask you if you will still keep uh, the re some of the restrictions, okay? We haven't required the mask. But, you know, when you open the gate, sometimes people just get a little tacky. And we don't want to do that. Please keep protecting each other. Please keep your distance. I know we had some guests Sunday and we want to hug, but please respect each other. Respect yourself. And uh, let's just protect as much as we can because we want to come back in here, all right? So we're an intelligent people. We're grown-ups. You know, we don't need to be pampered and pampered each other. We're, we're grown-ups. So anyway, you all come on back and... And don't worry about anything, all right? Just don't worry about anything. 
it's good, and God is good, and he's taking care of us, and, and um, everybody, just do the best you can is all I ask, and that'll be just perfect. Well, um, and again, the bookstore is not open yet, and I'm going to ask you, please don't, just don't get so close to each other. I noticed Sunday people were getting real close, just for getting close enough to spit on each other, and you know, um, probably shouldn't use that word. My little Ainsley said the other day, she said, does everybody have saliva in their mouth? And uh, we said, yes. And she said, well, my teacher said it helps chew the food and digest the food. I said, that's right. And she said, well, you know that saliva is just a fancy word for spit, technically. And I said, yes, it is. So uh, she taught me what the word was. So um, anyway, let's just keep our distance still. For just, I'm not going to ask you to do it forever but just another week or two. So just long enough for us just to make sure that everyone's safe. All right, I'll be quiet. We're going to continue tonight talking about hearing the voice of the Lord and learning to hear the voice of the Lord. Uh, let me ask you, how many of you were here probably three or four years ago? I don't know. Time passes so quickly. Maybe five years ago? I don't know. But anyway, it was Wednesday night, and I, the Purpose Driven Life had just come out, or had been out a while, and I went through the whole book. 42 weeks we taught every chapter of that book, and we had to condense it because they were long. But it was very, very good. Now, the name of, that's Rick Warren's book, by the way, and it was called The Purpose Driven Life. And then he came out with A Purpose Driven Church, and, of course, many, many books after that. But I'll never forget on that Purpose Driven Life, the subtitle is, What on Earth Are We Here For? And he answers that question. I mean, it was right up front. If it wasn't the first page, it was pretty close. And his answer was this, to have fellowship with God. That's why we were created. That's why God made Adam and Eve. He didn't want just a bunch of animals. He wanted people that he could talk back and forth with. And it's just a huge a uh, thought for us, some things, we just have to have our spiritual uh, mind, our, our eye of faith to receive some of these things, like God dwells inside us. How could the creator of the universe dwell inside us by his spirit? We receive that by faith. And so this also that we're going to be talking about tonight is that God wants us to hear his voice, and he wants to have conversation with us. And we are here because he wanted to have a relationship with us. Again, that's something you just nearly have to receive by faith to think that the creator of the universe would want to spend time with us. He would just want to be with us, to have relationship with us. So I'll never forget some of the things we learned in that book. It was a blessing to me if nobody else. But... Colossians 1.16 says this, all things were created by him and through him and for him. Colossians 1.16, B, is a, this is the latter part of it. All things were created by him and through him and for him. That means you and I were created not for your husband, not for your wife, not for your children, not for the church. We were created for him and him only. And then he shares us with each other. And how many times have I said to people like our precious Maria, well, he belonged to God first. He was, he's God's son first, and then he just shared him with mama, and he gave you the sweetest daddy. He created your daddy for him and then he shared him with us. What a blessing that is. So let me ask you tonight, how can you have a relationship with somebody and not visit with them? Now, we have done enough marriage counseling in this house. I've done plenty, and when we have couples, sometimes Lyndall and I come together so we can have a male voice and, and my voice as well as a pastor, and, and we go in there, and, and you know, you've got big issues sometimes. The number one issue most of the time is communication, you know, unless it's somebody has been unfaithful. 
But uh, most of the time, it will be a lack of communication or financial problems. And uh, those are the two biggies. Now, in some cases, you'll hear the couple may not just be communicating very well. Well, I thought you said, well, I thought you meant, I didn't mean that. But you said it, but I did not mean that. And then sometimes you'll get in there, and then you'll understand that one person does all the talking, and the other one says nothing. And you say, why aren't you talking? Well, it doesn't do me any good. And so they just don't say anything. And so the marriage falls apart. Uh, one counselor told one of our people that went to another counselor one time, they said marriages don't fall, uh, excuse me, people, marriages don't fall apart, people do. The people fall apart, but a lack of communication will kill any relationship. And if we don't communicate with God, if we don't talk with him, and listen, if we don't learn to hear his voice, it's going to devastate you. It just makes people so disgruntled not to hear the voice of God. Brother Art, thank you so much for sending me uh, that girl I saw today. It was all over Facebook. Did you guys see the girl? She was all tatted up and had earrings all over the place. And she was talking about uh, she was taking a walk, and Jesus appeared to her. And he's walking out in front of her, and she's running trying to catch up with him. And he had, you know, he was far enough ahead of her. There was too much space, and she couldn't catch him. And so she said, I've got to talk about this right now because he spoke with me, and so I need to talk about it the way it came. And so Jesus said, was telling her that there's so many people that's going to miss him uh, simply by the fact that they don't understand how special they are to him and how much he loves them. And he wanted her to tell us that he's coming sooner than we think. And I mean, this girl was busted up, was she? I mean, you that saw her, she was crying and weeping. And she said, I'm a beautician. You know, I don't come out here with no makeup on and do this ugly cry like this. But I'm telling you, she had heard from Jesus. Now, I wish we all heard from him more often like that, but we usually don't hear him audibly or see him in person. Every now and then in this life, you will. But for the most part, we have that discerning that we learned about last week, that feeling, just that knowing of him talking to us. So he does depend on us hearing from him. Now, I want you, though, to turn to Matthew 4 and 4. Um, you are very, very familiar with this, but I want us just to take a minute because it's so important. Some of these things, you've seen them so long, you've heard them so long that sometimes you miss it. But Matthew 4 and 4, Jesus was, just came out and um, he had just been baptized at the Jordan and Satan had led him into the wilderness. And when he gets out there, the devil starts in on him. And uh, Jesus, uh, he said, now, Jesus, you know, you could turn these stones into bread. I know you're hungry. You have been eaten for 40 days and 40 nights. Turn these stones to bread, in verse 4, Jesus says. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Did you catch that? Did you catch that? He said, I want you to live by the words that come out of my mouth. By every word, live by the words that come out of God's mouth. And we're just not familiar with living like that, I think. The church just gets slack, and we back up from some of these things. Can we really live by hearing the voice of God? Well, that's what Jesus said you got to do. Jesus said, don't just live by bread alone. Now, I've probably forgotten it many, many times since, but I'll tell you, when my husband and daughter were killed that Monday morning, this scripture came so alive to me, I didn't want to eat very much because it was just so mind-boggling what had happened that day, but that both Rick and Jamie were snapped out like that. And <clears throat> I remember I could hardly eat, and, and this scripture came to me. It's okay, it's okay. 
it's okay. You don't have to worry about not eating because my mother and different ones, you got to eat, you got to eat, you got to eat. And the Lord just put it in my heart again, just unknowing. It's okay. You'll live, you won't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of my mouth. And Dwayne, I'm telling you, I live by his words for a long, long time. Now, as time goes on, you learn that you can start to function. And uh, I'm telling you, those desperate times, just like we're in right now, this big crisis. See, this is the place, folks, where this is the place where the church strives the most. In a time of crisis, this is when the church picks up. You pick up yourself by your boot tra straps and you come on into the church and the body of Christ usually moves into a new awakening. So appreciate the crisis, meet with God, talk to him and say, God, I want to live by every word that comes out of your mouth. I mean, we live by bread. Thank God we have some good food around. But God is saying, I want you to be different from the rest. I want you to live from my words. And you know what makes us different? From the people you work with, the people, excuse me, I shouldn't have said that because there's a lot of good folks you work with. But the difference between you and an unbeliever is you hear the voice of God. That's the difference is you have a personal relationship with him. So that makes it different. And, you know, we don't, as Pentecostals or uh, Pentecostal faith, we don't use that word personal relationship as much as the Baptists do. But the, pers the Baptists are always saying, I have a, do you have a personal relationship with God? You know, Jesus Christ, my Savior. Well, the reason Paul used this word so heavily, a personal relationship, is because it is personal. It's just your personal experience, just you alone. No one else can get in this relationship with us. Not your mother, not your dad, not your husband, not your wife. Not the kids. Nobody's in this relationship but just you and him. Isn't that awesome? Just like you and your husband or you and your wife. You have little secrets that nobody else knows. What is that? It's because it's your personal marriage, just you and him, and you and her. That's it. I know you had kids, but it's just you and that person. And, G and, and Paul compared the relationship of a man and a woman to the love of Christ for the church. And so with that, then again, it's just him and it's just you. Now in Ephesians 5.22, you know what I was referring to right there. Paul describes Jesus as, man, he was just living. He was a man. He was a thinker. He's an, he's an active person. He's a, he acts, he walks, he talks. In my little book that I wrote years ago, I went to the book of Psalms and, and it mentions nearly every part of God, it mentions his hands and his arm and his forearm and his ears and his eyes, even his eyelids, uh, his feet, his hands, his fingers, his eyes, his ears, his smell. I mean, it just mentions everything about God. And Paul here took, uh, went into Ephesians 6 and just began to show us Jesus like a man. And uh, then he begins to talk to the men about love your wife as Christ loves the church. Isn't that beautiful? Because it's a personal thing with just Jesus and me and just Jesus and you. And so don't get all worked up about your wife. Maybe not, you don't think, has a relationship like you do with your husband because you've got it with Jesus and you can talk to him about all those personal things. So um, we just don't want this marriage to fail because of a lack of communication. I'm going to tell you something. I could not do what I do in this house without hearing him. I just wouldn't. And um, <laughs> I know many of you that were in the 50s and 60s. My sister loved, uh, she, she grew up in the 50s, and she loved uh, so much of the 50s music. And Neil Sadako was a, was a big thing, you know. He, he wrote things like um, Sweet Sixteen and Calendar Girl and, and a whole bunch of those popular little sweet songs. And so I was watching him the other day on Facebook, and he's an old guy now, you know. He's really old. He's got arthritis in his little fingers. And, 
And he still comes from his apartment from one of those old brownstone buildings in New York. And every time he comes on, he says, hello, it's me, Neil Sadaka again. And I'm just going to cheer you up during this time of crisis. And he starts singing those old hits. And you know, it's just been kind of fun to hear some of those things. But I heard a documentary, and I wanted to listen to it. If I really felt like I should listen. And, and he was talking about the power of a song. And we spoke about that two weeks ago, not according to the way he saw it. But I thought of, he said, for 10 years, he said, um, I think he said 10 years, he had 10 number one songs, one right after the other. And he went from having like a couple of thousand in the bank to millions, I mean millions, $500 million in the bank. And, and he just got wealthy overnight from all these songs. And then everybody started recording his songs. And then he said the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and all those famous uh, rock and roll people came. And he said, it just cleaned me out. Me and the other 50s stars, you know, we were gone. We were just nobodies. He said people would see me on the street and they'd say, didn't you used to be Neil Sadaka? And he said, it, you know, it was just horrible, just a horrible thing to hear. And then he started trying to recreate himself. 10 years later, and then he did. He came back with some of those songs like, I See Laughter in the Rain, and I think some of the big uh, rock stars came out, pop stars, whatever they're called. And so he recreated for many years until he retired. And I thought, after listening to that, I thought, that poor man, he worked so hard. See, the world has worldly wisdom. But after listening to him and after digging into this and knowing about us, hearing the voice of God, I thought that must have been so hard for him, even though he knows music and lyrics like the back of his hand. I thought, how hard to have to do all that by himself. Him, he didn't have any inspiration. He didn't have God to help him. He did it. He did it according to the world's standards. Now, you and I don't operate by the world. And we don't, we don't live by every dollar that comes in, though we've got to have money. But he was living by the money and fame and fortune. Where you and I, Paul said, you live by every word. And I'll help you in every situation. But come to me and ask. Don't worry about going to so many other people. Come to me and hear what thus saith the Lord. You know, God didn't get laryngitis, you know, he spoke to all the Old Testament prophets, priests, and kings, and the, the New Testament, he spoke with those people just as he does. He spoke uh, by the Spirit, by the Spirit, especially after the Spirit came on Pentecost, but he spoke verbally to many of them. But when the Holy Spirit came, he speaks to us now through the Holy Spirit. And if you are not hearing him well, uh, I think sometimes we ignore him. I think sometimes he speaks to us and we think it's us. Now, I can tell you right now, it's not going to be the devil. Now, if it's something according to the word, do you think the devil's going to tell you to do something good? And do you think that you're going to tell you to do something that's going to put you out? For the most part, people won't, won't tell yourself to do something where it's going to really take some effort on your part. So don't ignore it when the Holy Spirit speaks because he's taking us somewhere. But I'll tell you what, I just, I just hated to think about him having to, to work on his own. I don't care who they are. And I feel bad for preachers today that are living in, and they have to go find something by somebody else. I, I wonder how many preachers are really called to preach today that can't preach a sermon unless they go grab it from the Internet or something. God is a big God, and this word is so big. It's so huge. He can help us. He gives us ideas. And Jesus said, I am the door of the sheep. Brother Tim, just open that door and walk through it. Look, that's a door. And the man walks through the door. Now come back. Now Jesus said, I am the door, and you are the sheep, and the sheep walk through the door. 
He'll always be a door for us. He said, because nothing was made except by me and through me and for me. So you come through me and you were here for me. And I want to be with you and I want to talk with you and I want to have a relationship with you. Kathy, let's go to John 10.10. 10. Now, I know just a few weeks ago, if you'll allow me to rewind for just a minute, this certainly bears repeating. Go to John chapter 10. We spent a couple of Wednesday nights talking about the sheep hearing God's voice and what Jesus said. And, and I remember crying that night. I remember my tears just welled up within me because I heard Je Jesus, the sweetness of him and the humility of him and the trust that he had for us. I mean, Jesus trusts us more than we trust ourselves. My goodness, he loves us. And my heart was just broken that night. And I remember going home in the car, just weeping before me. said, Lord, you're just so good. Um, look, let's just look at, uh, we got a minute here. Let's read uh, John chapter 10, verse 1. You can look above if you don't have it. John 10 and 1. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up another way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Now to him, the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and, and leads them out. This is red letters. And when he brings them out, his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep do what? They follow him, the he says this, for they know his voice. That's so sweet. Oh, and look, look, here's when, here's when the, the weeping came. This was the sweetest thing that Jesus, listen, he didn't just think this about us. He, he talked like he knew this is the way it was going to be, Brother Art. He, he talked like this is just the way we are. I love this. Look at verse 5. Yet they will. By no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. He goes, oh, no, no, my sweet people, my sheep. See, there's literal sheep and there's literal shepherds. And when we were in Israel, we saw literal sheep and literal shepherds, and we got to go down into Nazareth where Jesus was brought up, and they reenacted like Mary was there, and there was a shepherd there, and, and the old donkeys grinding up the corn. And uh, I heard um, Robert Morris, Peggy was telling me that Robert Morris is doing some great work on hearing God's voice, but I think he did that about a year or two ago when he wrote this book called... Um, just left me. Anyway, I heard Robert Morris say this in reference to this. He said he and his wife were in Israel. Now, I wish we would have talked a little more to those uh, shepherds, Kathy. But he said, when we were in Israel, we spoke to these shepherds. And he said, I started asking him questions about he and the sheep. According to John chapter 10, I wanted to hear uh, what Jesus' words. And he said, do the sheep really know your voice? And he said, oh, yes, oh, yes. He said, you see the fields here in Israel, we have a lot of room, and the fields are really big, and we bring our sheep in and let them eat off these uh, pastures, and then we'll move them on over to another. And uh, so he said, whenever we have company and the other shepherds join us, and they'll bring their sheep over uh, for the day, and then they'll move back into another pasture overnight, maybe come back the next day. But, but he said... Um, We'll just stand around the fire or we'll just be standing around there visiting and talking and laughing. And, and he said, and when it's time to go, he said, that old shepherd, he said, the shepherd, he'll just give his sheep a whistle. Or he uses a word. He says, well, what does he say? And um, this one shepherd said, let me find it. He said, uh, they've got different names. He said, one sh shepherd friend just says, ep. E-P, yep, and another one says, ha, and when they do that, he said, all those 
sheep. They just divide themselves from the flock. And they just start, start heading off and the old shepherd starts walking and the sheep just start going after it. See, so the things that we read, the things that most of the, the apostles taught, and Jesus as well, when Jesus started talking about the ground and seed sowing, he was usually talking to a farmer. When he was talking to uh, about fishing, fishers for men, he's talking to um, fishermen. And here he's talking about shepherds because he's been around a lot of shepherds. He's called a good shepherd. And we're sheep. And you know what? He didn't say this about lions or bears or tigers or giraffes or even dogs. Now, dogs will follow their master. Sometimes they'll get ahead of you. But a sheep won't do that. And many say they're dumb animals. Well, we'll leave that where it is. But we need Jesus. Uh, do we? We need Jesus. And so he says, oh, no, I know my sheep. He said they won't follow another. See, that shepherd was telling the Morrises, he says, look, they joined in with our sheep. But when it's time to go, up, and they just jump in and follow him right on out. And Jesus said, that's how you all are. He said, you won't follow anyone else. You'll follow me, and you'll run from a voice of a stranger. And you know what I found out about you, the people of God? I don't know you real well, but I think I know most of you, that if somebody comes to your job or comes to your door or meets you at Walmart and they try to take you astray, I think I got a feeling that you'll dismiss yourself and you'll walk away from them, just like Jesus said you would. He said, no, 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 you won't follow a stranger. You'll flee from him, for you don't know the voice of strangers. You don't know that voice. The only voice that you've known over the years now is the voice of Jesus. And he not only depends on us to hear his voice, he wants us to hear his voice. And we must learn to hear his voice. Amen. Oh, God. When I read that, John 10, 11, it says, I am the good shepherd. Look at that, John 10, 11. We, we could cover this whole thing. I mean, it's just so big. Look at verse 11. I am the good shepherd, and good, the good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. Look at verse 14. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep. And I am known by my own. I am known by them. I know them. They know me. Isn't that the sweetest thing? Isn't that just personal and precious? That's not your wife or husband talking. That's Jesus. I know my sheep. My sheep know me. Look at verse 27. Ooh, 27. I'll tell you, I wasn't intending on this, but these things are just so good. Verse 27, my sheep hear my voice, and I say it with me. I know them. I know them. And they follow me. He's so proud of us. Ooh. Especially us who follow him. He goes, I know them. So according to what this is saying, now you can weigh this. But it almost sounds like when we're born again, this almost be should at least become an instinct in us. When you see what Jesus is saying, it looks like it should be automatic to the Christians, like it's a part of our DNA. Wouldn't you say, Lynn? It's like a part of our DNA. It's just in us. It's just a part. It's like instinct. We know. We have the ability, the ability to hear him. After, of course, that's after we're born again. But it's a part of the new nature that he gave us. You say, well, then if we have that instinct, Pastor, then why in the world are you telling us we must learn how to hear the voice of God? Either we do or we don't. And I don't. And if, I, if it's instinct, then I want to hear him, but I don't hear him that much. Well, think of the babies. We've got a lot of new babies around here. This old guy, he's just kind of learning to set up by himself. Pretty soon, you know, he, he doesn't even say mama or dada yet, but he will. He'll say it very soon. And, it'll just, and, and then another word, faith, just in case you're wondering, he'll learn. You don't even have to send him to school, preschool, TK, nothing. One of the first words he'll learn is no. <laughs> he didn't have to go to school to learn that. 
Oh, he, he already does that. <laughs> you know, you just move your head. Or mine, mine, mine. You know, so, so we just came out of the world when we got saved. So we just came out. So we're still full of all that selfish mess. So we're going to have to retrain ourselves to think, no, it's not all mine. It's yours first, Jesus. And the answer is not no. It's what thus saith the Lord. Lord, what do you think? So everything starts being a little different. So the baby starts with a few words. Dad ate mama, water, baba, you know, all those little things. And then they start maturing. And, and they, even, even now, I can guarantee you, probably little Reyes, when daddy walks in, mama walks in, grandma and grandpa walk in, they know their voice. They could probably, even at his age, be, he could be in the living room, they'd be in another room, and he hears Roman's voice. And I guarantee you, he probably already knows your voice, doesn't he? Yeah. See, you're very young, but when you're saved, you get saved and you come to Jesus, that relationship starts. Yeah. You fall in love with him. He loves you, and you begin to hear that voice. And you may not feel like you know how to pray. Somebody called me the other day and said, Pastor, do I have to pray out loud in the morning? Do I have to pray out loud? And I said, well, you know, it's, you don't have to pray real loud. I mean, who wants to hear a loud voice, even especially yours early in the morning? But at least open your mouth and whisper or say something. Because if you just think it in your mind, your thoughts are all crazy, all mumble jumbled. So at least open your mouth and talk or whisper or whatever. But you'll learn more. You'll learn how to talk. See, as we get older, you don't say the same things when you're uh, 10 years old that you said when you were uh, 1 year old. And then you don't talk when you're 20 like you did when you were 10. And when you're 60, you don't talk like you did when you were 30. I mean, you've got, you've got a whole different mindset. You've, you've got different relationships with different people. You've learned things. And so we all talk differently as we get older. But I promise you this, church, the older you get with Jesus and the more relationship, talk to him. And then be quiet and let him talk back. Just be quiet sometimes and just sit there and think. I love what uh, Jensen Franklin said one time. He was at a pastor's conference. And he said, pastors, I'm going to tell you, whenever you're studying to get your message, he said, you need to, before you do anything else, just sit still and think. Just be quiet and think. And just let the Holy Spirit speak to you. You may not think you're hearing his voice, but just think and just let your mind flow. So sometimes you just got to sit still and think. You're facing a situation, Robert, on your job. you got some things going. Sometimes just sit down. You can pray a lot, but just sit down and think. Just think about that thing. Just think the thing through for a little bit. So the more fellowship we have with God, the more we're going to hear his voice. I mean, that's just a given. And so hang out with him somewhere in your day. You've just got to do it because I love the fact that Jesus said, I know my sheep and my sheep know me, and they hear my voice. He didn't say you might. He didn't, he didn't even say what I said tonight. He didn't even say as you get older. But I mean, I think that's probably right. But he just said my sheep hear my voice, period. And he said, you know my voice so stranger, you won't follow, but you'll follow me. Oh, God, is that sweet? Oh, God, come on, let's go home. Let's stand and... And agree together. Wonderful Jesus. I want to thank you for all those good reports we had just earlier in the service. The good things you've done for your people. And Lord, there's people in this house tonight and at home that really are depending on, they got to hear your voice. And I pray that somehow this simple little message has helped somebody tonight. Oh Jesus, at least the part that when you were talking and you said, Oh, no, no, my sheep know me, and I know my sheep. I think that's so sweet that you said that to us. 
You didn't have to put that in the Bible, but you put it there. Because you said, no, they won't follow a stranger. They will follow me. And I'm the door of my sheep. They'll come through me. Oh, he loves you. Oh, he loves you. He compared marriage. Sal, you're getting ready to marry a wife. And he said, oh, that you might love your wife as Christ loves the church. The comparison is awesome. He said, I love my church and I gave my life for her. That's why he wants us to hear his voice. Wonderful Jesus. Lord, you've been so good. Oh, God, speak to our hearts. Change our lives. Change our minds. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, the Lord bless you and keep you. Cause his face to shine upon you. Be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And may the blessings of Abraham overtake us. In Jesus' name. And keep you safe. I plead the blood of Jesus over you from the virus or any other thing. Oh, Lord, may we follow after our shepherd. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you need prayer, I'll be right here to pray with you. Thank you all for being here tonight.